This is the way we talk in Tucson, Arizona. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 383. I don't know what week it is. I don't know what day it is. But we're here to talk about pro wrestling. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. I... Hopefully no one listens, but uh, if you go back two weeks ago to the last show we did I started having like a coughing fit at the end of the show and then uh, I got the flu that day (laughs) and I've had the flu for two weeks now Hmm. seems um, it's going significantly better right now I sounded like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. for about a week there but uh He's he's auctioning off his uh, endorsement, by the way. <laughs> Un- unreal. Un- unreal grifter. Anyway, uh, but uh, we're back here now to talk about WWE Bash in Berlin, NXT No Mercy. Of course, the big show this coming weekend is AEW All In. And I'll sprinkle in a little uh, happy G1 talk. But uh, we can start with WWE building to Bash in Berlin. Roman Reigns got laid out on TV uh, in the in the build to this pay per view that he's not on, mm-hmm. and um, currently we have a four match show. They usually are gonna they're gonna add one more, and we'll see what that is. But uh, the top two title matches are Gunther versus Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens in a babyface match where Kevin doesn't want to challenge for the title. <laughs> And then we have a mixed tag with uh, Priest and Ripley, the Terror Twins, against the Judgment Days, Dirty Dom Mysterio and Liv Morgan. And then a strap match with uh, our friend CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, uh, one of your all-time favorites. They're going to wrestle in a strap match. So uh, it seemed like uh, a week or two ago that they had retconned the friendship bracelet part of CM Punk Drew McIntyre's feud. And then on TV this week, uh, there it was. It was just back back a part of the story again. Uh, but Punk and Drew are going to wrestle on a strap match. And what do you think of the build to this contest? Um, it feels like we're running on fumes. <laughs> feels like it's time for both these guys to move on. But I guess uh, Punkster needs his win before they can uh, they can end it. So, Sure. Uh, strap matches aren't good unless you are willing to do what uh, Brian Danielson and Ricky Starks did to each other, or what John Cena and Randy Orton did to each other. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if Old Phil and Drew have it in them. You have to you have to basically fight each other for real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to maim and uh, <laughs> bruise and inflict actual uh, scars to uh, to have a strap match be good. So. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Rhea and uh, Damian Priest as the Terror Twins. What do you think of those two still being aligned in storyline, even though they were kicked out of their group? <laughs> United by all of their friends deciding they hated them. It's, it's the worst kind of baby face turn. It like, is. I, I know it works sometimes, but it's the worst. I think it works better on the Rhea side because like, she was, she was wronged. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't know. Drew is just like, I don't know. Finn was mad that Damien accidentally cost him the title like a year before. Uh, I don't care about that, but they're they're just constantly sniping at each other for a year. Yeah. Yeah. They, they teased this off and on for a long time. And then eventually Finn was Finn blinked first and turned on Damien. And so now we're supposed to feel bad for Damien. Um, I don't know. It, I think it works. Those they did like two straight weeks where it was just them wrecking shop and beating everybody up, and with the exception of Liv and Dom, who keep escaping before they can, you know, get the full beat down. 
Right. Um, and then, you know, did the reverse Uno reverse card of that this week and had the the Judgment Day. Because there's like eight Judgment Day people and there's just two of them. So I guess eventually you have to do a week where the Judgment Day beats them down. So um doesn't feel like a strong group uh when two when two people can beat down six people, but I guess they kind of righted that ship a little bit this week. I don't know. Um, what what if what if two of those six people are Carlito and uh, the kid with the giant head? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you got a muscled up old old head who can't work or move, and you got the the little fellow with the big forehead. I guess that's fine. It's not a not an imposing faction if they're supposed to be uh, running the whole show, but. Um, hey, people are really into this and people are especially into the idea, I think. More so, I think they're into the idea of Rhea like putting Dom through a table or something. Um, oh, for sure. Which I assume we will get either at this show or maybe they'll do a stip match somewhere down the line. But um, yeah, this is... Uh, it's it's re- People are so into this stuff, so it's working. Um Again, feels like we're kind of spinning our wheels here. Uh, maybe you need to get uh, Rhea and Damien another person eventually, like like a Jey Uso, as I think we previously uh, suggested. Um, but I don't know. In the meantime, uh, it's fine. The mixed tag will have a lot of crowd heat. <laughs> it will. And they're in Berlin, who never gets shows. So um, the crowd's going to be molten lava for oh, everything yeah. anyway. Um, Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. Interesting feud. If you can call it that. <laughs> it's based on friendship. They like one, one another a lot. Cody thinks Kevin deserves a, t- a championship match. Kevin thinks he doesn't deserve it. Um, I think we're just waiting on some misunderstanding here. Or, or, I don't think it's right for Kevin to go super mega Kevin Owens heel again here. Doesn't feel like it's the right time for that. So Mm -hmm. maybe we have some kind of misunderstanding. What do you think? Yeah, you do the tag match and somebody ducks and Owens super kicks Cody off the apron or something or... You know, one one of those. He gets raked in the eyes, and then he accidentally, while he while he's blinded, he uh, he gives Cody a stunner or something, or or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's hey, let's try some stuff. That's sure. fine. That's that's fine. I think this is fine because to WWE's current credit, and you know how hard it is for me to give Paul and Bruce <laughs> any credit. Uh, A lot of the top feuds are based around a bunch of people who really hate each other. (laughs) Yeah. And want to kill each other. And so it's fine if one of your matches is not that. And it's, you know, an athletic contest between two men who want to be the world's champion. That's fine. You can, you can do that when you have a bunch of hot feuds around it that are, that are clicking and gelling. Gunther and Randy Orton. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about uh, the worst brawl of all time. Twice on <laughs> on Monday. I was going to say, I I don't know how how a match between these two could be bad, and yet the only physicality I've seen between the two been pretty bad. Yeah, like the the. I mean, it was it was short and on a Saudi show, so you could forgive yourself and me for thinking well they just weren't trying very hard in their king of the ring match but yeah the physicality on monday they did like they did the bit with the app when the promo where kaiser got involved and then after uh and then after the match they had like more and like the punches look weird and like ro- and randy's trying to throw him into the the like the thing that's in every wwe <laughs> brawl ever where you throw the guy shoulder first into the post and somehow that gets messed up like <laughs> does not seem like uh they're on the same page but hey they got some time to work work out the kinks i suppose 
All right, so that's the uh, the Bash in Berlin show. It's coming up on August 31st. And NXT No Mercy is coming up on uh, September 1st. That's a Sunday. And um, we have matches for that show. We have Ethan Page, the NXT champion, defending against TNA's Joe Hendry. With uh, Trick Williams as guest referee. That's a spoiler from next week's NXT. But babyface guest ref, um, heel champion, babyface TNA wrestler challenging for the title. What a world. What a world we live in. Mm -hmm. Jada Parker is challenging Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship. Wendy Chu is going to challenge Kalani Jordan for the Women's North American Championship. Um, Obafemi will defend the North American Championship against Tony D'Angelo. Chase University will defend their tag team titles against Nathan Fraser and Axiom. Um, and Wesley and Zachary Wentz, um, who is not a Nazi, despite the photo of him with a Hitler mustache, doing a Nazi salute that was posted to the internet. He is not a Nazi. And he's going to be wrestling Wesley. So those are the, the matches on tap for No Mercy for uh, September 1st. But more pressing, there's an all-in pay-per-view this weekend. And oh boy. Uh, they're expecting 50000 Might get 55000 Really crazy walk up, you get sixty thousand, something like that, at Wembley Stadium. I think anything over forty is a success sure. because um, otherwise you could just run an arena, or you can run two nights in an arena mm -hmm. uh, for forty. But anything over forty, I think, is a success, and um, it's built around title versus career. Swerve Strickland. Defending the world title against Brian Danielson. What did you think of what they did to uh, juice this up this week? Um, I thought it was pretty good. I thought Danielson's promo at the end. I, did, I didn't think Swerve's was great. Um, uh, I thought it was all right. Um, I didn't think Nigel McGuinness being there helped at all. Um, which is <laughs> a common theme I think about when Nigel McGuinness is involved in AEW. <laughs> he has Corey Graves syndrome in that... He was once a really good announcer, and then something happened, and now he's not anymore. Um, he had, he had Michael Cole giving him orders for three years. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> that does seem, seem to be a common a common thread amongst people who came through the WWE announcing system. Uh, but they were they were all right, too good, mm -hmm. and then Michael Cole was their boss for three years, <laughs> and now they're insufferable. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the entire time McGinnis is standing there, you're just thinking about. So we're definitely getting McGinnis and Danielson one more time before each of these guys leaves this mortal coil. So why why aren't we building? Why I don't know. It's like you're half building another match. A little bit, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think that made sense. Maybe if you know, if Danielson wins the title and you want to have them have a stare down afterwards or whatever, uh, fine, but. Yeah, didn't think it made sense to do that here. But uh, Danielson's promo at the end was really good. Um, he cut the closest thing he's come to a, you know, a promo that I think increased interest in the match since this feud started. And I know that's part of the build is that he's he's in the twilight of his career and he's, you know, he's at peace with whatever happens. But yeah, it was good to hear him like fire up and be like, no, I'm going to win and I'm going to kick your ass. Uh, like, yeah, okay. That, that makes me want to see, <laughs> see you fight a guy more than whatever happens. I'm happy. That's not really that exciting. So um, yeah, it was, uh, I thought it was pretty effective. Uh, they were in Cardiff, Wales for the show and there was a really, really hot crowd. So um, yeah, it was a good, effective go home promo. I thought, I thought as go home shows go, this is one of the best they've ever done, and it um, it didn't have a lot of fluff on it. Uh, 
mm. and it didn't have a lot of uh, things that shouldn't be on a go home show. I think the Claudio Okada match didn't need to be on the show, but uh, I'm I'm nitpicking there. So I'm, anyway, uh, I don't care for AEW for the most part, and yet uh, I thought this was a, their dynamite this week is really good. Um, also set for the all in pay per view this uh Sunday afternoon, Easter time. The patriarchy in a lot ladder match, London ladder match, defending against the Bang Bang Gang, the House of Black, and uh, I think there's a surprise team that is that a surprise? They're doing a match on collision. There we go. Yeah. For whichever trio is going to get in. But one of the guys uh, in that trio match on collision is wrestling in CMLL on Saturday night. So uh, huh. I don't think uh, I don't think Claudio's team is going to win that match based on that. The, they they are, though. <laughs> oh, so I guess he's maybe it's a Saturday after a Friday night show. Maybe he's, he's flying he's, to England. He's Friday night in Arena, Mexico. OK, and it's the, Friday. The, night. Right. I and then the pay- the pay per view Sunday afternoon, right? Okay, so yeah, I guess Cla- so. Yeah, Claudio is a madman, and he wrestled in Wales on Wednesday, flying to Mexico for a Friday night show, and then is flying to England. A, the the CMLL show on uh, Friday night. It's a uh, a twenty man tag main event. <laughs> <laughs> ten ten guys on one side, ten guys on the other side. A twenty man tag. Well, that's a bit ridiculous. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a Grand Prix. A global Grand Prix or some stuff. Anyway, uh, they told the same story with the basically with the trio title, but they did with the tag team title, where it was uh, there was going to be a match to decide one challenger, and then at the end of the match there were multiple challengers. So look, you can't you can't win them all, but um, I thought this was super lazy. <laughs> um, There's, yeah. This, the top matches, which we'll get to, have they that they have hit upon, I think, have all been somewhere between competent to very well laid out. And the rest of the card, like these matches, are the most lazy, cut and paste, any US wrestling television show of the last 15 years bullshit. Like, it's... It's dreadful. People talking about their Wembley moments. Wow. Go to hell. Wow. Go straight to hell. Um, Whoa. Whoa. That's that's lazy. It's it's just lazy. And it uh, yeah, it's bad. It was it's so like I said, I'll say a lot of good things about this. But yes, the trios build the tag title build. uh, And I'm sure there's another one I'm forgetting. uh, Just really lazy. So um, I don't know. Maybe they should try harder next year, or maybe you know get rid of the trios belts if you don't have enough teams to have a strong division for both, which it feels like you don't right now. Yeah, Young Bucks defending against FTR and the Acclaimed in a three way. FTR and the Acclaimed had a pretty good half hour match on Collision mm-hmm. last week. An old, an old reminds me of the early days of Collision. The <laughs> Phil Brooks era of collision where uh, every match went too long because only like 10 people worked on the show. Yeah. Um, no, it was a good match. It was a good match with a bad finish. And uh, yeah, look, it, it got them to where they needed to go, which is that they're doing a three way, even though the acclaimed won a number one contenders match like two months ago and never got their. T- oh, I guess they got their title shot last Wednesday. And FTR screwed them. So, right. So FTR was rewarded by Christopher <laughs> Daniels for that. <laughs> yeah. They were given, they interfered and got the number one contenders DQ'd and were rewarded with the opportunity to win their way into the pay per view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great, great, great. Um, hey, Chris Jericho is wrestling hook and uh, for the FTW championship. And we've seen this match before. And um, I honestly can't remember if Jericho beat Hook once or if Hook just, I think Hook has just beat Jericho. Well, he beat him once because he won the title. Oh, Lord. That must have been, anyway. 
while I look up uh, uh, Hook's cage match here, uh, <laughs> Chris Jericho versus Hook for the FTW Championship, a pay per view match. You know it's not going to be a pay per view if Jericho's not on it. So uh, there you go. Yeah, he's got to have Fozzie play uh, play Wembley for the second straight year. Ugh, Lord. Um, there's, I think uh, they should have done Hook versus Big Bill because that's the match they're doing on Collision, and it would be a better match and also be more interesting. Because remember that one time they built up for like three weeks to to Hook suplexing Big Bill, and then he finally did. It yeah, great. it was great. Okay, so I'm looking at uh at Hook's cage match profile here, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a lot of uh, there's at least one two. There's two matches referencing a tag team called Lion Hook mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Jericho and Hook teaming together. In between there, we have Hook defeating Jericho on Dynamite in March. Then Jericho defeats Hook at the pay-per-view in April to win the FTW championship. And then we have Jericho beating Hook and Shibata in a three-way. <laughs> sure. At at double or nothing, as you do. If you say so. And uh yeah. So it looks like they're uh they're one in one, and Jericho is also also has a win in a three-way. Um anyway, I have no memory of Lion Hook whatsoever. I uh tune out. I do because I I remember when I'm insulted. Oh, okay. (laughs) I remember that being uh, that being. I feel like that was the last. I'm sure now it would be said that this was always the plan was to turn Jericho heel, but right, right. I don't think that was the plan at the time. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. They'll do some hardcore stuff, and I assume Hook gets his big win here. Do you remember and how bad the pay-per-view match was? I don't remember it being good and it <laughs> going for a long time. And then in like the last minute, Hook kind of fires up and starts putting them through tables and stuff. And then the crowd came alive. But I it was I, it was four months ago. Jericho's four months older now. Yeah. Hasn't had a lot of <laughs> a long time since Chris Jericho's had a good wrestling match. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's. But like you said, Jericho's got to be on the show. So here's his match, at least. Like, let's let's give him a tight 12 minutes. What do you say? Casino gauntlet for a future world title uh, opportunity. Roderick Strong, Evil Uno, Hangman, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy are confirmed for this match so far. I mean, why is anyone other than Hangman in the match if that's going to be the field? Yeah, that's a good... they see they seem really big on getting everyone on the show this year. To your point, yes, at least all the men. <laughs> a little more sparse with the ladies, but unless they announce something on Collision, I didn't see. Um, okay, I mean they're gonna add, um, you know, the buy-in or zero hour or whatever matches. It is two hours long, so right Friday night or Saturday night, they're gonna put a bunch more on these uh, on this show. Um, even though the shows have already been recorded. Yeah, they'll just splice in like a a yeah. a bra- a, you know, a, a right. graphic and have the next caliber voice over. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean it feels like a tang man. You've got so trying to keep track, you have another show in two weeks at all out in Chicago. Yep. Yep. Correct. Darby Allen already won a title shot at the Grand Slam show by winning the prestigious uh, Rampage Rumble or whatever it's called. Royal Rampage. Yes, Royal Rampage. that's that's the end of uh, September. So that's September 25th. Right. right. So All Out is first. So they have not said the winner gets the shot at All Out, but that would make as much sense as anything. Right. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, but at the same time, after putting it off and not doing it at this show to do hangman versus swerve with essentially a two week build seems uh, like a mistake, but I mean, maybe it's, well, maybe Swerve's not winning the title. So, or not keeping the title. So maybe it'll be, I mean, in that case, it still seems like hangman should win. Cause I don't know who else 
I mean, I mean, you could have somebody else win and have Danielson go in and beat a guy or Swerve go in and beat a guy that isn't Hangman. You could have Orange Cassidy or somebody win it. But so, so the assumption here is that Danielson is getting the title and that Danielson is going to quote unquote retire after the paper pay per view in Seattle or wherever mm-hmm. it is in Washington. <clears throat> Uh, at the beginning of October. So it's going to be a short run for Danielson, probably. And then he could put over Darby at Dynamite, or he could go to a time limit with Darby at Dynamite and say, hey, you can get a rematch um, Mm -hmm. at the pay-per-view. And then he puts over Darby, or uh, Hanger wins the... uh, Yeah. And then Swerve chases Hanger. million different things you could do. Could be any number of a thousand things. Yeah. So, yeah, with all that in mind, I don't, there aren't a lot, unless there is a surprise name in here, like a John Moxley or someone that you're bringing back as a surprise. I think most people assume Ricochet is in this match. Yeah. Um, So if you wanted to have a guy just win and then could have a good match in two weeks at the pay-per-view with whoever the, with Danielson, that he can just then beat. Uh, yeah, it could go to it could go to somebody else. But if you're furthering the long term direction, still seems to be Hangman and Swerve, whether it's for the title or not. So, uh, yeah, it would make sense for Hangman to win. Uh, Mercedes versus Britt for the TBS Championship. Um, feels like Camille. Maybe you should have held off on Camille till the pay per view here. Mm. particularly if Mercedes is winning the first one <laughs> and then you can have Brit sell for Camille for a month and then uh, Brit overcomes and gets the title in the second match uh, but they've already introduced Camille and so here we are um, what do you think of this I thought this week's was better I didn't really like the bit where kind of out of nowhere it became like Mercedes is running away from Brit. I like I know she's a heel now and heels by and large are cowards and that's fine but it's like they had a standoff face to face and you know you could say Brit got the better of her or whatever and Mercedes said I'm not giving you the title shot. But it's not like anything really happened after that. It was just all of a sudden they're chasing like like Brit just starts chasing her around and like jumping out jumping at her through the crowd and stuff. Um, and then they have Camille. So I didn't really think the build, the follow-up build, some of that also was hampered perhaps by Brit being off TV for two weeks for, uh, I can't remember why. Um, but uh, Brit's wearing a sting mask. She's jumping out of the crowd. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's getting suspended. Yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on in Brit's life. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I thought hey, this... she's been through a lot. She has, she has no one. No one could deny that. I know. Um, oh. I know the line. I know, right. I, know, I know where you're. All right. Good. I know where your head's at. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought the, <laughs> I thought their, uh, their thing on Wednesday was better in that it was just them talking trash and they brought in a little bit of real life, which is that Mercedes, you know, Brit has talked about how Mercedes and Bailey were big inspirations for her. Um, so yeah, I think they they did a better job getting it back on track this week than they had in the last couple of weeks, where it was just either Mercedes running away from Brit or Brit getting laid out by Camille. Um, so yeah, I thought it was they stuck the landing as far as the build goes after a a, a few uh, a few stumbles along the way. Jack Perry is a very serious scapegoat. Mm -hmm. He's going to be defending his uh, goth TNT championship against Darby Allen in a coffin match. That should be fun. Yeah, they'll kill each other. (laughs) They've already, I mean, Darby's already lit Jack on fire. He's already given, given him chair shots to the head because he loves this business. So yeah, they'll, they'll do crazy stunts and bleed and they'll probably be, glass and and all kinds of crazy stuff and yeah it'll be uh it'll be it'll be fun and 
Yep. And then uh, I don't know. I, I guess Jack should win because if Darby's going to challenge for the world title soon, he doesn't need the TNT belt too. But and the coffin match means you don't have to pin Darby as he's going for a title shot soon. So there's that. You can you can have the the uh, uh, the elite guys run in and and cost Darby the match or whatever. Um, there is a pre-show match with Chris Statlander and Stokely Hathaway against Willow Nightingale and Tomohiro Ishii. Why not? Yep, and then the uh, winner of that picks their stip for the all-out match that Chris and uh, Willow will have. So, yep. I don't know. It'll be fun. It'll be comedy. Um, I assume Chris is winning because she like very aggressively accepted the challenge for for this match um but yeah you'll get you'll get comedy of ishii and beating up stokely and whatever so it'll be fun that part of it just sounds delightful <laughs> I, I was also trying to think was like is this the first time ishii's gonna wrestle a guy in like 15 years that he's taller than maybe so or is the yeah. same height as at least yeah um mjf versus will osprey for the American Championship, MJF is doing the ripoff Sam Adonis gimmick, which uh, Corey Bray's brother Sam Adonis has been doing in Mexico for the last eight years. The uh, down in the Baja, yeah, in the Baja, uh, he wears an American flag suit and uh, talks like a mega guy, MAGA guy, and uh, and uh, he's very edgy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then you have Will Ospreay who's just uh, fighting for his family, bruv. And he's going to rename that championship the International Championship. Um, I just... MJF does absolutely nothing for me. And um, yeah, I hope they have a good match, though. What do you think? Yeah, I I shared some opinions about Max off, off the air with you recently um, about how I can see it makes a lot of sense now that we know that Triple H was his hero um, based on how long his promos go and how long his, some of his matches go um, and how they're not great matches a lot of the time. little um, self-indulgent. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that they hit on, because the whole thing that this kicked off with of Max killing Daniel Garcia to get at Osprey being that... Osp- or being that Max is jealous because the fans the fans loved him and then he got hurt and Osprey came in while he was gone and when he came back Osprey was now more popular than him it's like okay that's kind of an interesting little a little nugget to throw in there all of the faff and the yeah the as you said a rip off of a gimmick that's been done countless times over the years including currently by Corey Graves' brother um yeah, I don't I don't really need any of that. And then yeah, he went with the the tried and true. I'm gonna I'm gonna bang your wife uh uh to close out and they had a, a little brawl. It was fun. Um Osprey was insanely over in uh in Cardiff. I imagine it will be even crazier uh the reaction he gets in London on uh on Sunday. So this will probably have you know this might I would think this would have the most heat of anything on the show. So, uh, yeah, now you just hope the match is good and uh, under 40 minutes if we're lucky. Oof. Um, all right. Uh, last match to preview on this program, Tony Storm versus Mariah May, the uh, the people's main event. <laughs> yeah, it's a, like, it's a good old-fashioned grudge match. We're just talking about this with WWE, but it's two people that hate each other and want to kill each other. Um, uh, yeah, I, I am excited for this and I think they will, I think they will, if they are put in a position and given time, I think they will have a chance to have a really, really memorable match. So I hope they get that opportunity. All right. That is, uh, coming up this weekend. Wembley stadium afternoon start time on Sunday. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. won the New Japan G1 and says, apparently because he's an idiot, he says, I don't want to wait until January. 
to challenge for the world championship on the biggest show of the year. I want to do it in October. All right. So uh, that's that's what's happening there. The G1 winner. Yeah. Go ahead. If you just had the company say, hey, the winner's not going to get the automatic title shot anymore. I think that's fine. Like you could you could do something else like that. That that is uh, according to I was reading a thread by Chris Carrollton this week. Like that's a relatively recent thing that they've done with the you know with the G one winner getting the Tokyo Dome shot. Usually it, w- it was later in the summer or the fall that the the winner would get it until I think it's when I think it's during the Okada Tanahashi series that that kind of shifts. Yeah. So. It's fine, but yeah, having him specifically be like, actually, I don't want that. Yes. It's strange. Although it does get him out of, out of having to do the thing that every briefcase guy has to do, which is defend the briefcase in a match. Which is like, what's the point of winning the tournament if you have to defend the briefcase after that? But um, yeah, kind of a weird, a weird call. And also leaves open, uh, what are you going to do for Tokyo Dome if... If you're not doing the the world champion versus the G1 winner, yeah, I don't, I I I don't know. Um, maybe they, I mean, they do have that joint show with um, AEW the second day this year. Of, mm-hmm. uh, they're doing two days of the Tokyo Dome again. Till morale improves. Yep, it's uh, it's a Saturday and Sunday this year. Um, so they're going to bring in. Um, yeah, I could. Y- yeah, I don't know. I think um, the ghost of John Moxley uh, is cast over uh, two promotions right now, mm-hmm. AEW and New Japan. Uh, Moxley is healthy. Moxley is doing well. And <laughs> he's been gone off AEW TV for two months. And... He dropped the New Japan Championship and didn't do the G1. So, to me, that screams one of two things to me. Either there's drama with uh, John Moxley and his contract, or John Moxley and his push, or John Moxley's going to show up here on uh, Sunday and uh, lay out Brian Danielson. I don't know. Could be any number of a thousand things. But uh, my gut tells me that uh, John Moxley is going to be involved in title matches uh, with New Japan and with AEW uh, before the end of the year or so. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, ideally, you do want to shoot. This is your biggest show of the year. You do want to shoot a big angle if you're if you're AEW to get people watching, especially again because you have a, a you know a pay-per-view two weeks later and another big dynamite after that. And then a pay-per-view in October and, and beyond. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Moxley being gone is really noticeable (laughs) and strange given that. Yes. You know, he's healthy um, and has previously, and if it is a contract thing, that's interesting because he proudly talked about how he was working without a contract while being the AEW world champion a couple of years ago. So correct um yeah that's interesting but uh yeah we'll see his wife's still at tv every week so yeah all right um is there anything else that uh you would like to discuss here no i think that's i think that's uh i think it's about that uh oh uh wwe's running a house show in the same city like five minutes away on the night of aew's december show (laughs) And I think that's wonderful. Okay, so this is it's the best kind of of thing because um, e- everyone has plausible deniability, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and yet everyone has clearly done this to f with one another. <laughs> it's like WWE usually runs Orlando Christmas week because it's like the first before they hit. Madison Square Garden and Philly and DC or Baltimore and Detroit and Los Angeles and whatever. You know, the big holiday right. tour where right. they run two shows a night for six nights or whatever. I believe it was between the Orlando and Baltimore shows when Tony Storm famously said, I don't want to wrestle anymore. 
Well, she went to DC first, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was between right, well, DC and Baltimore. Okay. She was like, that was she, that's enough. <laughs> she was like, I'm not going to Baltimore. It's cold and I hate it. <laughs> yes. I'm going home. Yes. Um so WWE usually runs Orlando that sure. week. AEW announced a long time ago, like six months ago. We're running uh, Orlando on that date. AEW has yet to put tickets on sale. WWE put tickets on sale for their show. So it's like, well, if that's your date, can you can you start selling tickets mm-hmm. when like, well, clearly uh, each side did this to, to screw with the other. And uh, it's a uh, it's a freaking wrestling war. What do you expect? Yeah. yeah, I don't think any like most things in this in this wrestling war. I don't think anyone should be mad. <laughs> like <laughs> everyone's I mean, mad let, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't look unless you have a personal financial. If you're a stockholder in WWE, <laughs> not mm. that house show business is a big factor in that. Uh or uh, you're a, a silent partner in AEW, then I guess you could be upset if you're if you're afraid revenue is being affected. But otherwise, I don't. Guess what? I'm gonna you know if I watch that AEW pay per view, it's it's not really gonna affect me if they sell 1,200 fewer tickets because you know some of their audience decided to go to the WWE show down the street instead. That's not that's not my problem. It's not my money, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fun. All right, big stadium show this weekend. Enjoyed everybody. Uh, until next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <laughs>Jimmy Carter's trending, so I just clicked on uh, why is Jimmy Carter trending? And it's like, well, people think he's going to be uh, like, oh. surprised tonight. So it's either uh, Taylor Swift, George Bush, or Jimmy Carter. You know, I'll give Jimmy Carter credit and that he's the only former president who ever seemed to appreciate how much terrible things you do just by being the president. And I who see. tried to like, he just spent the rest of his life working with like Habitat for Humanity and building houses and stuff. Yes. It's like, he's the only one who was like, I did bad things and I need to, I need to, <laughs> I should probably be in prison, but instead I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll do my own penance. Well, and when, um, you know, there was a Democratic president in the 1990s who got impeached and uh, it was probably... Uh, politically motivated yet at the same time uh, that president did uh, have an affair with a an intern uh, Mm -hmm. in the Oval Office fascinating and uh, Jimmy Carter then was uh, uh, shopping his memoirs or whatever and he uh, he put in his memoirs I uh, I've lusted after women in my heart in in his heart like how Ric Flair gets married? Yes. <laughs> yes. Lusted after women in my heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you are a human being, sir. <laughs> Most you... people have uh, have fallen victim to that uh, that that deadly sin once or twice in their lives. Yes, of course. But the, the... anyway, uh, Jimmy Carter, apparently terrible president. I don't know. I wasn't alive. Sure. But par- terrible president. That everyone now loves. <laughs> nice man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Look, you don't I think just, you don't think anyone is good or nice, though, right? Not not really. I I don't think you get to be the president by being a nice person. Um, Even fifty years ago. Mm, I mean, I guess if you're comparing them to like current day politicians, yeah, probably. Sure. They were probably a- more normal, and also because there wasn't necessarily like you didn't you weren't the president for four years, and then you became a 
multimillionaire who does like Netflix deals when you're done back then. Right, right, right. It wasn't the uh, uh, blank check yes. uh, for the rest of your life. Um, I mean, morally, though, he's coming after, uh, let's see, in the 60s, you had uh, Kennedy, mm-hmm. uh, morally bankrupt. Uh, Lyndon Johnson um, kind of got a lot done but uh, not known as a uh, a great president. Mm-hmm. Nixon, morally bankrupt. <laughs> Ford, uh, inept and uh, not elected. And then uh, Jimmy Carter. And then uh, Ronald Reagan on the other side, who people have strong feelings about. Mm-hmm. And uh, there you go. Anyway, I just, just remembered some guys. <laughs> President's edition. <laughs> I try to keep on keeping on.